Today, we're going to be taking a look at the software used to program LEGO Mindstorm EV3 robots. I'm going to be using the education version of this software, but if you're using the home edition, that's completely fine, and you can still follow along. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is open up a new project window. To do that, I'm going to go up in the top left-hand corner, locate the plus sign, and click on it. This will open up a new project window. And before we get too much farther, let's go ahead and go up to the top left-hand corner, press File, and then find Save Project As and click on it. This will open up the Save dialog. Go ahead and give your file a name. I'm going to call my New Project. After you give it a name, just go ahead and click on Save. Okay, so what this does for us, it creates a folder called New Project down below it is a program called program I can rename this one let's go ahead and double click on this and I'm going to rename mine first program if I want to add a, an additional program to this folder I can click on the plus sign right here and then click on new program and this adds a new program to this folder and the nice thing about this is I can have multiple programs inside of this folder and when I look on my robot to try to run these programs, I have all my programs stored under one folder rather than looking in a bunch of different locations to try to figure out which program I want to run. The next thing I see on the screen is this block right here that has a play button inside of it. This is where we're going to start attaching program to. All of our different programming blocks are located down at the bottom and they're separated out into different categories and they're color coded by different colors. The green tab contains the block for the media motor, and the media motor is good for arm attachments or any other type of small movement. The next one is a large motor, and these are mainly used for wheels or if you need to move heavier objects. The third one in the list is the move steering block. This one is just a combination of two large motors that are put together, and it just makes it easier to control both motors at once. The next one is the move tank. And this is similar to the move steering block, but you can control each motor separately. This one is the display. So this is how I can change what appears on the screen of my EV3 robot. This one is the sound block, so I can play different sounds through the robot. And the last one, I can change the color of the status light around the buttons. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of these. So I'm going to be starting with the move steering block, which is the third one here. To drag it up to the screen, all you have to do is click on it and then drag up to the play button up here. For my move steering block, I have three different options. The first one, right under the up arrow, is the direction for the robot. I can click on this zero here and use the slide bar left to right to change the direction. It goes from minus 100 to 100, and these don't correspond directly to an angle. So if I wanted to make a 90 degree turn, I wouldn't be able to just type 90 and have it do that. But we're going to look at how we can do that later. The next one that looks like a speed gauge, this controls the speed of the robot. Just like the other one, I can click on this one and I can use the slide bar to go up and down. Anything above the middle line here will make the robot go forward. Anything below the middle line here will make the robot go in reverse. The last option is for rotations. This one doesn't have a slide bar. I actually have to type in numbers. What rotations are, it's the number of times the wheel will spin, and this will control how far the robot goes. Just like I can change the number for this one by typing in a number, that's also an option for the other ones. So instead of using the slide bars, if I want to type an exact number, like maybe 82, I can do that by clicking on the previous number and then typing in the new one. So I can type in 82 like that, without having to struggle to get exactly the right number I want with the slide bar. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the media motor. So I'm going to delete this one. To delete a block, all you have to do is click on the colored banner at the top and then press the delete key on your keyboard. I'm going to be getting the media motor, which is the first one here, and dragging it up to the play button. And you can see the media motor only has two options on it. It has a speed option and a rotations option. And just like the other one, for the speed, anything below this line will make the motor spin in reverse. 
Anything above the line will make the motor spin forward. Okay, now let's go ahead and take a look at the move tank button. So I'm going to delete this one. The fourth one in this list is the move tank. And I'm going to be clicking it and dragging it onto the screen. This one is a little bit different than the move steering block. And let me go ahead and just get this one up as well so we can compare. This one, I don't have an option for the direction, but I have two options for the speed. So this one right here will control the first part of the motor and the second one will control the other motor. I also have an option for rotations, which is how many times the wheel is going to spin. The way I would use this one to do turns is I would change the speeds for this one. So I can change the speed for this one to 25 and leave the other one at 50. And since one of the motors is moving slower than the other, this will cause the robot to turn in, a, in one direction. If I want to turn in the other direction, then I would just switch it. I would have this motor at 50 or some higher speed. And then this one at a lower speed, like for example 25. Depending on the project, you may use this one over this one. But for the majority of the time, you're going to be using the move steering block, which you can remember by looking for the steering wheel next to the two motors. I'm going to go ahead and delete these two. And now let's go ahead and take a look at the first orange tab. This one is the flow control for your program. So this will include things like the weight block, the loop block, the switch block, and then the loop interrupt block. Let's go ahead and start by taking a look at the weight block. By default, it defaults to a one second wait time. I can change this to a higher time so I can type something like five. And then this would cause a five second wait in my program. You also have the option by clicking this button here to interact with different sensors that are available for the robot. So I can use this weight block with, let's go ahead and choose the color sensor. So in this case, what I'm doing is I'm waiting for a particular color to appear or to be recognized by the sensor. And then after that color is recognized, then I can have a, something happen over here. So I can add more code to this side after it picks up a particular color. Okay, the next one in our list here is the loop block. This one is very useful if you have something that you want to repeat for some time. So for example, if I go over back to the action tab, and let's go ahead and drag just a couple blocks here. And I'm going to change this one to minus 50. So what this is gonna do is it's going to go forward for one rotation, go backwards for one rotation, and then since it's in a loop block, it'll go back to the beginning. So once again, it'll go forward, backwards, forwards, backwards. And then since this loop is set to forever, it'll just keep doing that until you close the program. Just like the weight block, you have different options for this. So and if I don't wanna do it forever, I can choose to do it for a certain number of times. So I can choose to do this for maybe four times. I also have the options for different sensors. So maybe I can use the ultrasonic sensor, which me measures distance. And I can say, repeat these two actions until an object comes into its view that is less than 50 centimeters away. Okay, we'll be getting into more examples of how to use sensors later on. I'm just trying to show you some different things you can do with the loop block for now. The next one is the switch block. So let me clear out these two green ones. And I'm going to drag a switch block inside of here. And just to keep things simple, I'm going to change this one just back to the unlimited. Okay, a switch block is similar to an if then statement in other programming languages. And you can do this based on sensors, you can do this based on logic, and a bunch of other things down in the, the options menu here. The one it has by default is a touch sensor, so this is kind of like a button. And this will be useful, you can do something like if the button is pressed, then you can have the robot move forward. And if the button is not pressed, which will be this X here, the statement is not true that the button is pressed, then maybe you can have the robot go in reverse, which you would do by changing this to minus 50. So the way this program would work, it would check to see the state of the button. If the button is in the press state, which is number one, then it'll go up to this check mark box up here and it'll go forward. If the state of the button is not pressed, then it'll go down to the X and run this code down here. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the yellow section. 
This section contains all your different sensors. Uh, this is different than using the weight block. These ones are used if you want to take a measurement from the sensor and then you can do something with it later on. So for example, I can take, let's go ahead and take the ultrasonic sensor. And what I can do with this, I'm going to delete this part. And I'm going to go back to the green tab real quick, grab a move steering block. And what this one is doing, it's taking a value from the sensor, so it's measuring the centimeters between it and the next object it sees. And I can take this value and either store it in a variable, which we'll talk about in just a second, or I can move it into any of these options here. So let's go ahead and just attach it to the speed option here. So what this is doing, it's taking a measurement from the sensor to the nearest object, and then it's putting that value as the speed for my move steering block. So let's say I see an object that's 50 centimeters away, then it'll measure that 50 centimeters, and then the speed for my block here would be 50. If something changes and it, the object moves closer to it, like let's say it's only 25 centimeters away, now it'll take that 25 that it reads, insert it into this block here, and now the speed for my move steering block would be 25. So this program, as an object moves closer to the robot, it would move slower and slower. Moving on now to the red tab. This contains different things like variables. You can also do different operations with these. So for example, if I add this math block up here, instead of going directly from the sensor to a block, I can take a sensor reading, plug it into this block here, and by default it's on add, so I can take whatever value it reads, and then add a particular number to it, like let's say I want to add 50 to it. And then I can take whatever value the result of this is, and put it into one of these options here. So what this program would do, it would take the sensor reading from this, the ultrasonic sensor, it would put it into this math block to add 50 to it, and then it would take that value and put it as the direction for my robot. You, ha you also have different things down here, so you can compare two different numbers, you can display text on the screen, and you can also choose random numbers. The last tab we'll be taking a look at today is the blue tab. If you're just starting off with programming, you're not going to be visiting this section too much. This contains a lot of advanced features that we'll get to later on. I just want to make you aware of it, but we're not going to really spend much time on it today. Okay, next to the blocks, we see this menu right over here. And this is when we connect to the robot. This is the section where we'll go to download the program from the computer to the robot. To do that, if you're using a USB cord, you would plug the USB cord from the computer to the robot and then give it some time to connect. Once it connects, then you'll see this down arrow light up. Once this becomes lit, then you can press this one to download from the computer to the robot. This one down here, it'll start your program. So if you're connected to the robot somehow, you can just press this one and it'll start your program right away rather than you having to go into the robot and manually pick out the program. And just a few more things before we end for today. Up in the top right hand corner, you have different options for zoom level, so I can zoom in, I can zoom out. I can also, if I'm getting a very long program, I can use this hand tool to click and drag the screen. So if my program was extending way to the right, then I can just click and drag to the part that I was working on. Okay, so that's going to be it for this video. We're going to be covering more topics in the LEGO Mindstorm EV3 software. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and stay tuned for the next one.